What if writing Commodore 64 programs was as easy as writing HTML? And, what if you could still do all the powerful tricks that games and demos demand? What if you could actually use all the available cycles in a frame? Introducing C64 ML, a markup language for the Commodore 64 that allows you to do all that and more. Let's take a look. First up, we'll look at the classic Hello World example. As you can see here in the C64 ML file, we've got a root element, a body tag that defines some colors, and a simple text element with positioning information. Super simple and just like HTML. Now let's start up the C64 ML engine and load our markup file. All right, let's see what else we can do. For this next one, we put a bunch of different text blocks on the screen, and now we're using this color animation element to animate the text color. All right, let's take a look at what we get from this one. Pretty cool to be able to do that so easily. Oh, by the way, did I mention you can also use JavaScript? In this next one, we use some JavaScript code to time the addition of text to simulate a simple typing effect. Let's check it out. Indeed it does. Pretty fun stuff though, right? Simple text is fine, but what about a scroller? Well, as you can probably guess, just use the scroller element in the markup file like this. Now, of course, because of the mismatch in frame rates with this video, it won't look as smooth as it does on the actual machine. I assure you, it's perfectly smooth, just as you would expect. And yeah, what about adding more scrollers? Well, just add more to the markup file. Here's an example that goes a little crazy with this. It's kind of just ridiculous how much fun it is to play with this. For this next one, we'll add some simple raster bars. And with a simple attribute, we can use some built-in raster bar animation. You can, of course, customize this however you like with JavaScript too. Now, how about using the C64's bitmap graphics mode? In this example, we split the screen, text on the top row, and a bitmap below. For the bitmap, we just give it a path to the bitmap data, color, and screen data files. In this next one, we use JavaScript to mess with the colors in bitmap mode to create this simple plasma-like effect. Notice we get a callback into JavaScript on every frame. This next one does some simple 3D math in JavaScript to animate a 3D cube. Well, if we can do one cube, surely we can do more, like say 10 cubes, right? And remember on the SysOp64 cartridge, you're essentially getting an 800 megahertz dual core turbo mode for the C64. So there's quite a bit of CPU time available to do more here, even though we're running the core engine and interpreting JavaScript and all that stuff. Next up, let's look at the sprite element to put some sprites on the screen like this, and then use JavaScript to animate them. In this example, we add an attribute to the settings element to open up the vertical borders.
there's also a way to load sprite sheets, including a way to flip the sprite images for you to simplify doing sprite animation. This next one dynamically adds sprites at runtime from JavaScript and demonstrates how the C64 ML engine manages the multiplexing of sprites for us behind the scenes. Now what about the SID chip? The C64 ML engine can play SID tunes as well. Just use the tune tag and give it the path to the SID file like this. Now let's look at an example of reading the Commodore 64's joystick port from JavaScript. Just call the read joystick method and pass the joystick number you want to read. Super simple as you'd expect. For the sysop cartridge, we'll also make it easy to use wireless USB joysticks like I've shown in a previous video. For this next one, we'll use the mouse. Just like in my recent video on SID Wizard superpowers, we'll use the Sysop 64's USB mouse and we'll draw the pointer in the Sysop's frame buffer instead of using a C64 sprite. After clicking on some text, we'll navigate to a different C64 ML page using window.location. Then, we'll use a timer for a countdown and then navigate to this viewport demo page. Viewports allow you to scroll within a much larger virtualized screen. You can use this to create massive game levels, and you're really only limited by the DE10 Nano's memory on the Sysop cartridge. Okay, so now we'll mouse over the text and then click on it to navigate to the linked page. Now we're viewing our countdown page. So, could you really make a game with all this? Absolutely, and in a future video we'll go through an example. So, what exactly is happening here? It's actually pretty simple. There's a loader that handles parsing XML and the JavaScript. Think of the core engine as essentially a scheduler, what pokes to make and when. It was built with a driver model to allow other systems to use the core engine. Drivers need to be able to handle asserting DMA to stun the C64 CPU, and then they also need to be able to wait for a specific line and cycle, and they need to be able to issue writes and reads on the bus while respecting the timing of the VIC chip. And of course, for a full solution, there has to be something to run the engine code. In the case of the Sysop 64 cartridge, it runs on the Linux OS running on the DE10 Nano. One more thing, in case you were wondering, the engine will load C64 ML pages and any referenced assets from a URL. Here's a default page from c64ml.com. I cannot wait to browse the worldwide Commodore 64 web. Don't forget, please like this video and subscribe to support this project. See you next time.